possessions. We'll get the first crack here in the third quarter to get the basketball into Jamar Wilson. Interesting to see how cans come out. We saw them last week in Adelaide. Took flat in the first half and came out blazing away. Hill. Ball gets through a set, quite a few sets of hands. The shot clock's down to three. Warren with a bomb with one second left on the shot clock. That's one way of shooting yourself out of a slump. Well, and that's the easiest shot in basketball because he had to shoot it. So he didn't even think twice. No excuse that the coach isn't going to yell at you, so you let it rip. Hopefully that's something that gets him going and gets us a good ball game. And you've seen Cans do it in the second half on a number of occasions. They've won some close ones. Mark Worthington has the answer. Blaze with that extra pass and really been whipping it through hands tonight. Good spacing too, Steve. Found the open man and Wordo's going to knock that down when he's open more times than not. Cross wide mishandles it. Gets it to Loughton who's had the hot hand. Comes up short. Worthington with the rebound but he's running the floor. Tough shot off the backboard. Tipped in Anthony Petrie will take credit for that one. You love it when you're the closest guy, when somebody else tips it in for the opposing team. Wilson trying to handle it in traffic. Warren gets it to Brad Hill. Everybody just leaves him. And he just needs one of those to go, as simple as that. Petrie gets it to DeLeon. He turns the corner. Good pump fake, draws the contact, no call. So that was a great pump fake, but he had the chance to step through and make an easy basket rather than just go for the foul. As we see Werdo step across and make a great defensive play in transition. And Brad Hill, very good at attacking a player that's not stationary. Retreating. So Wertho picks the right spot. Hill likes to use that left hand when he's going full speed. Yeah, well, he's certainly talented at about six foot eight, being able to use his mobility and athleticism, be able to get around, use his left and right hand. But again, when things just aren't going right for you, they seem to fall like that, and the defense picks it when normally you can get around. Talk about Brad Hill and a Second, I've got a theory on what could help his confidence. Petrie drives hard to the basket. Now, my point on Brad Hill, we can talk about him and get a little break in the action. Petrie goes to the line. Sometimes I think you need to play, just play. My son's going through this right now. He's playing on a team. He's been on the Division One. Now he's playing Division Two. He's got a lot more freedom. The shots aren't as pressured. He gets to handle the ball a little bit more, and he gets an opportunity to improve. And in the past, players in the offseason would go to New Zealand, or they would go to competitions where they would get to play more of a substantial role, and I think that's what he needs. I think there's a number of players, and I think it's a good point. And I think anyone that sort of is either a fringe player or they're really trying to break into the starting five or trying to make that next step, I think it's a good thing for them to be playing in the SEABL or the QBL and really trying to dominate. Yeah, no doubt about that. And hopefully we can see these young players continue to improve. Petrie with his three balls off the mark. Jamar Wilson knocks it out of the hands of Will Hudson, but it went right to Mark Worthy. And Hudson will get a delay a game warning. So the next one results in a technical foul. And that's a good call by the ref. I used to hate it when you're waiting to get the ball in. And the defense smacks it away after they've scored, and they get a chance to be able to set up their defense. You can't actually get in to be able to break their pressure. Pressure just relentless by Adam Gibson. And the Gold Coast Blaze, we got a frustration foul on, I believe it's going to be Alex Loughton. And the Gold Coast Blaze pressure on the defensive end is absolutely giving Cairns a nightmare tonight. They're not giving them anything. It's almost like Aaron Fern has to be able to change up the tempo another way and go back to a zone defense or try and take a little bit of the air out of the game. 
kick at Gold Coast from getting into the paint where they've scored so many easy points. De Leon looks to turn the corner. Gibson finds a little space for himself. It's long. De Leon tips it to himself. Another offensive rebound by the Gold Coast Blaze. And it's deflating. Deflating when you've made the te team miss a shot and you can't come up with a defensive rebound. Grabeau gets some good position on Mark Worthington. And Mark Worthington, who doesn't mind some contact, probably felt like it. That's as, that is as little as I've hit somebody in six games. <laughs> you, you can't just barge through somebody when you've got a couple of steps to be able to make a, a move around them. I'm going on his reaction, but that's kind of hard because he has just blatantly knocked people over and didn't want the foul. Wilson has a good look at the three-point line, comes up short. They've been on the front of the rim all night. Wardington throws it up here to Will Hudson. He knocks Grabeau over. Petrie gets it to Worthington for the three. Loose ball, Hudson. Hudson again. See, that, that pass on transition was a great pass if he was playing with LeBron. <laughs> that was an ugly possession. But that's the end of it. You get to the effort on the glass. You know, sometimes big guys are always trying to go through some contact where they just switch hands and that one's free. Hudson wasn't able to lay it up. Patriot gets his head just clobbered behind crosswalk. See, that's the second good pass that De Leon's made. Coming off an on-ball, being able to get into the paint and find his teammate in a good position to be able to get up and finish the play. You see here, gets around both defenders, has the vision, and perfect pass for Petrie, who probably could have finished with a three-point play. And wouldn't be happy with the fact that he wasn't able to finish on that nice pass by Dries De Leon. I'm just trying to find a way that Cairns can get out of this funk. 26 points with only 16 minutes to go in the game. Pinch them because they look like they're asleep. They need to do something. Gary Williams, who gave them a nice spark in the first half with his quickness. Is back into the game. That's a bad pass. Will Hudson. It was awkward. Was Hudson with the tip. <laughs> Those guys needed to find a guard. That was ugly. And again, great defense from the Gold Coast. Getting in the lanes. That time it was Hudson that came up with this field just because he was denying that reversal pass at the top. Cross wide. Skips it to Jamar Wilson. He got his hands on it. Just everything turning into gold for the Gold Coast plays. Turnover number 13 for the Cans Taipan. It seems like they have more than 13 turnovers because even on possessions where they haven't turned the ball over, it hasn't looked very productive. And you can virtually add offensive rebounds to like a turnover as well, I reckon, because it seems like the Gold Coast, we haven't got it on our stats, but it seems like they've had at least a dozen. Hands in by Deva George. Aaron Burns is trying anything. Platoon and some players in. Dusty Reichardt, Jeff Dowdle also in. So they got five non-starters out on the floor for Cannes. De Leon with a pull-up. That never looked like this. Great pull-up from De Leon. Let the game come to him a little bit more tonight. Probably learned from that last game, as we said, in the experience from the way they defended him. Only three from seven from the field, but he's played with a whole lot more composure and hasn't needed to do any more than that. George gets it into Jeff Dowdle. Dusty Reichardt for a three. Oh my goodness. It's only 
counts for two. He had a foot on the line. So really going deep into the well. Dusty Reichardt launches the three. 50 to 28. Low output by Cans. We'll be back. True Value Solar's incredible new Samuel Power introductory deal ends Tuesday. With electricity prices rising soon and the carbon tax arriving in July, Australians could face increases of more than 20%. It's time to fight back. Until Tuesday, get a new release 1.6 kilowatt Samuel Power inverter with eight panels for an incredible TVS introductory price of $14.92. From February 1st, this price will double to $29.85. Act now to get the package for only $14.92. Hurry offer ends Tuesday, so call 13 Solar today. You gotta loosen it up a little bit. You gotta get nasty down here defensively, but you gotta stay within. You gotta stay within it. Right? Aaron Fern trying to inspire his team to get something done. They've got five non-starters into the game, and he wants them to get physical and get nasty. That's a good move. Give the bench a go that the starters aren't getting it done tonight. Maybe these guys can be able to get a little bit more enthusiasm and try and make something happen. But when you look at the scoreboard, you see 22 points. You can't think of it as 22. You've got to get that game back to about a 12-point deficit by three-quarter time and know that then you've got some momentum to give yourself a chance in the last quarter. Goal Coast. Four and a half to go here in the third. Torres fouled, the reach in. Well, Deborah George and Kerry Williams shooting. Deborah's 22% from the field this year, eight from 36 from threes. And Kerry Williams is 31%. So they haven't shot the ball well at all so, so far. So they're due. <laughs> they are due. And maybe this sort of scenario will suit them to be able to get back on track. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. They got nothing to lose. Nobody's expecting him to knock down these shots. No one's expecting him, the way his, their team has performed tonight, to be in this ball game. If you knock down a couple shots, get your confidence going, get more court time than you're used to. The only thing that lets you down there is you're not match fit, and you're playing well, and then you get tired. <laughs> Well, Aaron Fern's got to be disappointed with the enthusiasm that his team's come out with, though. This is a very, very big game for them to be able to get a win on the road and real, not consolidate, but really create a little bit of a gap between them and the Gold Coast, who were fifth. Reichardt. The Gold Coast defense has just been smothering tonight, just as it is there, and he creates a turnover. And there's either off the leg of Devin George or a shot clock violation. Take your pick. Either way, put it down to great defense again from the Gold Coast Blaze. You see their body language, their enthusiasm. They came here on a mission to be able to win this game to the convention center tonight. Brennan tees into the game, so Adam Gibson will be running the three spot. Or at least guarding the, the three man. On defense, Grabo hands in in the passing lane, knocks it out of bounds. The last nine games for Cans are played at the convention center on their home floor, so a win tonight would have really done a lot to solid things up for them. Well, they're going to make the floor, Steve. They will make the floor. I think Gold Coast have really got to get up to Townsville's position. To me, they're the ones that are vulnerable a little bit for this top four position. Yeah, they've got more games to play, and they've got plenty more on the road than the Cairns Taipans do. Dowdo with the hook. That comes up short. A lot of shots on the front of the rim for Cairns tonight. They leave Adam Gibson. Picked up everybody but the ball as Gibbo gets a rare good look and he drills it. He's got eight points. George. Eight balls deflected. Dusty Reichardt has to shoot it with one second left on the shot clock. 
Another good defensive stance from the Blaze. Great defense from the Blaze, but you can't run an offense for 23 seconds and get that shot. Like at some stage throughout that offense, someone has to get aggressive to be able to make a play, to be able to create the score or create for a teammate. Yeah, you got to look up there and see eight seconds left on the shot clock and make something happen. I don't care who you are, Adam Gibson. Well, he's making something happen. He's not his last couple shots down, and he's in double figures now. Take your hat off of the flies. Doing it with the D. Williams drives the baseline. George splits the D. His floater. That's the right idea as Alex Loudon gets the tip in. It needs to be Alex Loudon time. Good no call. Good offense again from the Blaze. Gibson with some great D. Somehow Cans come up with the basketball and get it to Dusty Rykar. Dusty hasn't lost any touch with eight weeks out of the game. Gibson. Goes the length of the course. Stephen Hoare with the offensive rebound. Petrie has played 100 games. This is 100 tonight. It seems like he's been around for about 300. Are you sure that's right? I'm pretty sure. I he, stand to be corrected. But I'm pretty sure he's, he's played with three teams, right? Yep. West Sydney. Wollongong. Oh, Wollongong was the one I couldn't think of. Now the Gold Coast. He's had a few injuries along the way. Man. How old is Anthony Petrie? He's got to be the oldest to get 100 games in the league, doesn't he? We'll have to check that <laughs> He would be. <laughs> Looks like he went on one of those missions. Yep. With the Mormons, too. <laughs> well, he hasn't been on any missions. John Bradley, he went away for four years. <laughs> He's a good man, Anthony Petrie, and a very, very valuable asset to this program. Oh, that's, that's scary. George gets away with a little carry and a skip and a hop. Trying to find somebody allowed an extra pass to Crosswhite. Stephen Hoare reaches in. I don't know how else to describe this offensive output from Cairns. Apart from sloppy and uninterested. They just look like they got the same passion tonight. And sometimes when you, you continue to, to go to the well, to have your team rejuvenate in the second half, sometimes you can say, all right, we're just going to turn it on, and you can't turn it on. You can't play like that. And, and I think we need to continue to concentrate on the effort that the Gold Coast have done, how proactive they were defensively to put Cairns in this state of mind. When the ball was thrown up, but just into them. And they have really bullied the Cairns Taipans out of having any sort of confidence or any sort of continuity in their offense. And they've done a great job defensively. And it's whether they can continue to be able to play like that, the Gold Coast plays. They really have. They have given them nothing. Ruthless. And that's a very frustrating feeling when you just can't get anything going. They're playing against teams that, as Garlip finds tees on a nice cut and a nice finish. And I always found teams that switch your man-to-man -man really well. That fr that's frustrating. You're running counters all night. Jamar Wilson with that handed pull-up. Man, he makes that look easy. I, I was waiting for a little something on, on tees. <laughs> this goal was a nice little back door he put it in I, I went through half his bio i'm not standing with you after the game his mom is going to be all over you <laughs> no she she did a great job she gave me a whole page is adam gibson is off the mark he's done a lot in the queensland state league as jamar wilson pulls up in short as oh. We have seen a lot of shots for the Kansas Taipans, and it's a one-sided affair 